Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bull dolphin right there. basics. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright, so like I said, we are going over fish finder basics. When it comes to fish finders, things can get very technical and complicated. In this episode, we're going to go over the basics. It's going to help you get started, give you some fundamentals to help you understand what you're looking at and how to manipulate your fish finder so that you can see fish, find fish, understand what the bottom is doing, and set you on the right path to having a successful day fishing. All right, so as the basics, this is your view screen for your fish finder. The other key important factor to it, which is what makes you see what you're seeing, is your transducer. Now there are two types of transducers. There are ones that get screwed to the transom of your boat and then there are also ones that are called through hull. They are mounted typically about the center of your boat. For all intents and purposes they do the same things. Now what I want to do is I want to explain the two different types of transducers that there are. There is what's called traditional or single frequency transducer and then there's also called chirp. What chirp is, is chirp is multi-frequencies. So let's say you buy your fish finder and it comes with a transducer. You don't necessarily have to use that transducer. You can get a more powerful one in traditional single frequency or your machine might actually be compatible with a chirp, which is a multi-frequency. So that's just something to think about when you're making your purchase. So I want to explain the difference between single frequency sonar and chirp really quickly, really simple. You got your boat and you've got your transducer. I'll say we've got a rear mounted one. What your transducer does is it sends a ping down to the bottom. Transducer sends down signal in the shape of a cone. Sends down a signal and then it returns the signal back up to the transducer and that is the readout that you see on your screen. Single frequency. This is traditional sonar. Traditional sonar is one frequency and one cone. One cone, one frequency. Your standard frequencies for these cones on traditional sonar are typically 50 kilohertz, 83 kilohertz, and 200. Now you might say, why is this important? Well, it is important because it determines the shape of your cone and the intensity of the readout. So here's the difference between the frequencies on a traditional single frequency sonar. This is our cone coming from our transducer. This is 200 kilohertz. So the difference is, is that's tight. That will give you more detail. However, it doesn't span out wider on your boat. If you've got a 50 kilohertz, your cone will look more wide, right? So this is 50 kilohertz. So what is the difference ultimately? The higher number frequency is going to give you more detail, yet it will not view wider around your boat. This you'll see more detail, but you'll see less fish. With 50 kilohertz, you'll probably see more fish, but a little less detail. When you have a single frequency transducer, it doesn't necessarily mean it's locked in one frequency. You might be able to switch from 50 to 200 or from 50 to 83 or 83 to 200. However, these are fixed frequencies. They don't change. So that comes to the difference between traditional sonar and chirp. Now I'm going to get a little bit into chirp. What is chirp? Chirp is multi frequency 
and multi cone. We're still getting the same cone shape shot from our transducer to read the bottom, yet we're getting many of them from one setting. So on the lower end of chirp, you're going to get frequencies like 42 to 65 kilohertz. And you're going to get cone sizes between 21 and 32. That means we're getting 23 different frequencies and we're getting 11 different cones. Now they're not happening simultaneously, they're happening at different times with each ping. But that's what makes the difference in clarity between using a chirp transducer and a traditional single frequency fixed frequency sonar. This is the lower end of chirp. The higher end of chirp, you're going to get frequencies like 150 kilohertz to 250 kilohertz. On the lower end, you're getting 23 different frequencies. On the higher end, you're getting 100 different frequencies all pinging down and it's going to give you a nice clear readout of what's going on. However, on the higher end with the more frequencies, you're actually going to get less cones. It's a tighter cone. On the higher end, you're going to get cone sizes from 11 to 16, which is only five cones. On the lower end, you're getting less frequencies but more cones. On the higher end, you're getting more frequencies, a ton more frequencies, but less cones. Again, it's the same thing. The higher frequency, you're getting a tighter cone. The lower frequency, you're getting a wider cone and more read out what's around your boat. If that concept doesn't change. But what does change is your readout. You're going to see those fish arches. You're going to see way more noise. You're going to see more bottom structure and definition. So the reality is, is that Chirp gives you that little bit of advantage. You can actually see the difference here in this example. The difference between what it looks like when you're using a Chirp transducer versus a fixed frequency transducer. Okay, so that was a little bit about the technical aspect of transducers and your fish finder view screen. And so now we're going to get more into the fun stuff of, hey, what am I seeing? Why am I seeing it? And what's going on here? So what we're going to do is we're going to say this whole whiteboard is our fish finder readout screen. Right here, we've got our bottom. Maybe we've got some arches. Maybe we've got a little, little dots. I'll explain all the difference of what you're going to see. When you're looking at your fish finder, anything past this point, anything to the left, is what is called history. It's the past tense. It's already happened. It is no longer under your boat. The only stuff that is right underneath your transducer is right here. Right here at the very right edge of your screen. The left edge is past tense. More modern fish finders have the capability to show what is called a scope. A scope is usually a bunch of lines over here and they'll have different colors. Some of it will be shaded gray, some of it will be blue, red, yellow, depends upon what color palette you have your fish finder set to. This over here is what is happening at that exact moment going underneath your transducer. So you say, hey, I don't see this A-scope thing you're talking about on my fish finder. Chances are you've got to go into your menu and your setups and you have to turn it on. For example, I have a Garmin Echo Map. If I want to turn on my A-scope, I will have to go into my menu and then I have to go into Sonar Setup. Then I will go into Appearances and then I click on a scope and it will make it appear over here on the screen. For Simrad, Lorance, Raymarine, it's all a little bit different but it's all similar. You have to go into your setup and turn it on. Alright, so now back to our screen and what we are seeing. First, I want to cover what we're seeing up here up at the top. This is always noise and seaweed and uh, churning from your prop. It's not necessarily fish. However, it could be fish and there are ways to turn this off but you don't want to because there might be fish up at the top in that noise. So remember, our transducer is shooting down a signal 
and it's returning back up. So it's shooting down and everything it hits through the water returns back up, makes what's called a return, also called echo. Depending upon what color palette your screen is set to, it will show up as different colors. It could be yellow, it could be red, you could set it to blue. The way to tell what your strongest color is, is you're gonna to wanna to look at your bottom. So let's say your bottom is yellow. That's hard bottom. That is your strongest return. So if you see arches that are yellow, those are typically bigger fish. Because remember, they're sending a harder return back to your screen. If they're more reddish, bluish, when you have that set up, they're typically smaller. And now that's not a rule. Just because you see a yellow fish on your screen and it's the same color as your hard bottom, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a big fish, but it could be. And now the next thing I want to cover is the differences. Let's say you're moving and you're seeing nothing but dots and you're saying, hey, I'm not seeing arches. That's more than likely because you're moving. So fish will more than likely show up as little dots on your screen if you're doing 10 knots, 20 knots, even if they show up at 20 knots. However, when you slow down to, you know, three miles an hour, three knots, whatever it may be, no knots, they will start showing up as arches. Now you say, hey, I'm not getting arches. Why am I not? Chances are your game, also known as your sensitivity, is not tuned in right. Again, you have to go in to your settings and you have to adjust your game. If we turn up our game too much, we're gonna get all sorts of mess and noise and everything. So you have to watch how high you turn up your gain. And what you'll see is as you play with your gain and you start to fine tune it, you might just see little blobs that look like fish. But as you turn it up, they might start turning into arches. And if you turn it up too much, you might see, you know, a lot of noise. So you'll have to turn it down and find a happy medium that actually shows you what's looking like fish. And that's how you start to tweak your fish finder so that you actually see these fish. And you say, oh, okay, now it's starting to look a lot more like what I see on YouTube and all these fishing shows. These guys show their, their fish finders and they see these arches. How come I don't get it? Well, that's how you start to see it. And so when it comes to seeing those arches, I wanna explain a little bit about the A-scope. This is going to help you identify what's going on underneath your boat at that exact moment. Don't forget about the A-scope. It's very important because everything over here is just showing you what was. Let's say our bottom is yellow. And we start to see a yellow line on our A-scope and an arch developing over here. That means there's actually a fish underneath your transducer right at that time. You have yellow and then it grades down to red and then blue. So yellow being the strongest, red being a medium return, and blue being the weakest. So maybe we have some red coming here and a little bit of blue with the arch here. Those are, you know, more than likely smaller fish. You would want to pay attention to the one with the yellow and find out what depth it is. You know, on your readout you're going to have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 feet, or whatever it might be, down to, you know, 800 feet. It's okay. But this is going to tell you what depth range they're at and when they're going underneath your boat. So it's very important to pay attention to your A-scope because that is the present tense. Now, also, fish finders have the capability to zoom in. So you can zoom in on your whole screen, or a lot of times what your zoom will do is it will split your screen and it will give you a zoom in of just, let's say, something like this area. So what you'll see is the rest of your screen will actually be like what it would look like on auto settings. And what's going to happen is this zoom in is going to show you a way more detailed picture of the bottom and what fish are around than what your full screen setup would look like. Okay, so before we move on to the last topic, which is gonna be your scroll speed and what type of fishing you're doing and how that affects what you're seeing on your screen, I wanna talk a little bit about your boat moving and what you're seeing on your screen. 
let's say you're moving and you're doing 20, 30 miles an hour. You're going to see fast arches and pitches and fish are more than likely only going to look like little dots. They're not going to look like arches. When you start to slow down, you're going to see less and it will be less arches and detail because that's more of what it's going to look like. And when you come to a near stop, it will actually almost look flat. So let's say this version right here, this piece of our screen is 20 miles an hour. This piece right here is about seven miles an hour. And then we'll say here, this is about one mile per hour. Nice and flat. You're not getting any of this. So your fish, when you're really booking down, don't look like nothing but dots. As you start to slow down, you will actually start to see arches. When you are at a near stop, those arches will actually become longer. They may even look like just big long worms that go all the way across the screen. But they will definitely be longer. If they're literally just sitting underneath your transducer, you'll see a long worm and that's a fish, so don't get that wrong. So that's the difference of what you're gonna see as you're moving in your different speed zones. So just remember, you're not gonna see arches when you're taking off. You're gonna see bigger, longer ones when you're at a near to dead stop. So I wanna move on now with this whole picture of what we're seeing while we're moving and how to adjust your settings appropriately so you can see the right things on your fish finder view screen. Remember, this tool is only as effective as it can be as long as you know how to use it and manipulate it to see what you want to see. So now what we're going to talk about is what is called scroll speed. Scroll speed is very important. What it does is it'll let your A-scope keep up and keep you in the present tense. So the easiest way to explain how scroll speed works and how to make it effective is to simply put, the faster you're going, the faster you want your scroll speed. The slower you're going, the lower and slower you want your scroll speed. Let's forget about the 20 mile an hour one because we're really not fishing, we're running. Let's say we're doing seven miles an hour, which means we are trolling. So for trolling, we're going to want to speed up our scroll speed so that we can actually see what is going on on the bottom almost in real time. If we've got a low scroll speed, what we're seeing right here, which would be the right side of our screen, has already happened. We're not keeping up with it. So we need to pick up that speed. If we are at one mile an hour or zero and we are bottom fishing, we're gonna to wanna to turn our scroll speed down real slow. So we're getting actual real-time readings of what we're seeing. And this is why scroll speed on your screen is actually adjustable. It's made so that you can adjust it to the different method or tactic of fishing that you're doing. If you're on the move, your transducer sending those pings down back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and your readout on your screen has to be able to keep up with what you're trying to do. If you're going nowhere, you don't want it going so fast. You don't want what's over here on the left in the past to have just happened. You want it to give you a nice, slow readout so that you can understand what's happening at that particular time. And so I hope that makes sense. The faster you're going, the faster your scroll speed has to be. The slower you're going, the slower you want it to read out. You almost want these two things to match simultaneously, as close as you can get it. Okay, so just to reiterate before we sign off, we've got our sonar. We've got a fixed frequency or a chirp transducer. And is our fish finder readout compatible with one or both? Both transducer types give us what is called the return, which is everything you see on your screen. Remember, everything you see on your screen is in history except for the A-scope, which is off to the right-hand side. That is the present. That's what's going on. 
So if you have a scope capabilities, I suggest you turn it on. So when it comes to return, remember your transducer is sending pings down and getting them back. Return is everything you see on your screen. There's ways to adjust it to have it be productive for what you're trying to see. And that is by adjusting your gain. The gain or it's also called the sensitivity. Different manufacturers call it different things. It's the same thing. This is going to adjust how much clutter and those arches that you see that look like fish by adjusting the amount of noise in your screen. And remember, the higher the gain, the more noise you're going to get. The lower the gain, the less noise you will get. So somewhere in the middle, you're gonna find something that your eyes tune into that you like, that's showing you those nice arches, you're picking up good bottom structure and everything that you wanna see. Yet, it's not so messy that it's driving you crazy. And again, there's that color we were talking about, about your bottom. Your bottom is always the hardest return. So whatever color that is, that relates to your arches that are your fish that shows you what the bigger, better fish more than likely are. And real quick to touch on the arch. What is an arch? An arch is just an echo return of a fish's swim bladder. The ping gets sent down and comes back up and that's why it looks like an arch. And lastly, the scroll speed. Again, if we're moving, we're trolling, we want a faster scroll speed so it keeps up with our movement through the water over the ground. And if we're at slow or stop, we want a slower scroll speed. With our scroll speed, we are trying to coordinate what is coming right off the right side of the screen with what is right underneath our transducer at that specific time. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about the basics of using a fish finder. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.